You've got a point on Christopher Columbus and the unique discovery. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, it's a fantastic one. I always try to explain the concept of the thousand doors by talking about something a bit tangible. And I always find the Christopher Columbus story a a good example of that. So from what I've read and understand, obviously Christopher Columbus is credited with discovering America. But the whole irony is that he never... How can you seek out saying, I want to discover America if it doesn't exist yet? Right? This is the whole disconnect. And it probably, it throws planning down the absolute pooper or conventional planning, like linear planning. This is the whole thing of the nonlinear. From what I've read, and it's quite funny, Columbus set out from Spain, I believe, actually heading west, trying to get to Asia, which is actually east. And why he was doing that from memory was a lot of the conflict that was going on, you know, that Central Europe was controlled by other powers and he was trying to get around them to get to Asia. So by going west to try and go east, that's how he actually stumbled upon the Americas. And that is just so funny because I guess a true discovery like that, you can't really know what it is beforehand. You can't really, you can't know what it is beforehand which for, to me is fascinating. And that's what makes a discovery unique, as to be something that no one's seen before. So if you take any field like law, engineering, medicine, it's all actually about if you're really going to contribute to your field, no matter what you're in, finance, it really comes from bringing a unique perspective. All right? If you can do what everyone else can do, but no more, how much, mar- what's your market value? Like, how do you actually contribute to your team? And what that looks like on a practical level is everyone kind of enrolls in the same experiences, expecting to stand out. If you, everyone who's competing for that job went to high school and went to, and did the same degree, then it's really hard to not only distinguish yourself in the eye of an employer, but also to be different, to be creatively unique. If you have diverse experiences, however, you're able to you're able to have a lens of thinking that is very unique. So a very good example, Luke, I might I might pick you. So you have sales experience because you, you began doing that on a retail yep. and now you've you've upgraded that a bit. But now you also have, you know, when you're continuing to develop technical competency. So you've got the initial IT degree, obviously, but then now you're learning more about networks, right? Which is a technical mm, part yeah. of what you do. Now, Mm -hmm. that is a great combination. Someone who has one or, and this comes into the whole specialized generalist kind of concept. Tim Ferriss speaks about this. So now you've got two things that are actually an incredible combination together. Because if you can really understand more about what you're selling, you'll probably be even better at selling it. Someone who's just good at sales but knows nothing about the technology won't be as good as you. Someone who knows a lot about the technology but is a terrible salesman will just confuse someone when trying to explain the benefits of the product. They won't be able to democratize the concepts. So if you just studied a, whatever typical job is, degree pathway might be to get into your job, you might actually have been worse off. So the whole Columbus thing is like, you know, it's the unique, it's the new that actually brings value. They, They give you a conventional way of thinking, but all that's gonna do is just reproduce the same results. If you really want to stand out, get promoted, get paid more, you've got to be unique. You've got to distinguish yourself. And I'd probably reference here a really good book called Range, which talks about that. It talks about uh, generalists rather than specialists and how it's just a more creative. It mm. just makes for more creativity when you have exposure to all these different things. I've had the pleasure to kind of go into all these different fields from psychology at a study level, not a practical level, nonprofit world through practice, real estate, property, and investing through practice. Now, education, writing, podcasting, and that's a very, that's also introduced me to a lot of the no code world and stuff like that. So now I can look at a problem. You and I could both look at a problem, but I have very different ways of solving that problem than say you do. And you are just a sum of those unique experiences. Because they're each each unique thing is a different tool and skill set you can apply, and some things just go really well together. 
Uh, when you only got one thing to lean on, then you're not. Something as simple as a podcast, for Christ's sakes. A podcast can give you great communication skills, critical thinking skills, networking uh, and network. And even that, even having studied something and then made a podcast is so much better than someone who's just studied something. Or if you work in a corporate job but have a, a podcast or a blog relevant to like some of the concepts relevant to your work or just another interest, you still stand out more than someone who just works in that corporate, you know, comparable to you. You show interest in something. So you come back to Columbus and this idea of, say, the unique discovery. It might not be as big as discovering America, but it's always easier to follow. All right, it's always easy to go, I want to go to America for a holiday. No one's really like, oh, wow, what's America like? I kind of, it's very commonplace for people to go. But when you go to some obscure part of, say, South America or the Caribbean or Africa, you garner more curiosity because it's more unique. Yet it's more in the unknown, right? You might know less about it. You might not know as many people who have gone there. And the degree to which you can be creative and innovative is that degree to which you can step into something that's in the unknown. So the greater your capacity to take on the unknown, the greater risks you're capable of because uh, you're less afraid and the greater innovation you're capable of delivering. I guess I probably would link this back to education as well because I don't think education is all about saying, well, this is the map we have to get to America. In other words, this is the map we have to becoming you know, successful. This is the map you have to building a career. When the people who made those maps were not following we're not content to just follow the map. Those people were trailblazing. They were willing to go and create a map. And that's the difference. So we're not made, we're not, we're not exposed to and made used to a lot of uncertainty through our current society. We used to like, this is why everyone tries to find this plan when they leave high school. You're looking for that kind of very carved out map. But I would say that it's a, you need a compass, not a map. It's like, you really need to know what direction compels you and calls to you it's it's something deeper than being given like just this this full full plan you know every step of the way in saying that i think i like what alan watts said like you can plan as long as you're content with the now like if you're happy with your life right now then it's effective to make some light plans about the future but when you just complete when you're just completely trying to like plan everything out because you're not happy right now those are the plans that normally end up in trouble yeah, interesting.